deep anterior lamellar keratoplasty is gradually becoming a technique of choice for corneal transplantation for keratoconus and other anterior stromal corneal pathologies that spare the decimates membrane and endothelium. The technique is preferred over penetrating keratoplasty for treating corneal stromal pathologies as it is an extraocular procedure and has minimal chances of graft rejection. It avoids most complications associated with open sky surgery and there are lesser chances of post-operative complications such as anterior sinecki, cataract or secondary glaucoma. Anwar's technique of air injection to bear the decimates membrane is a popular technique due to the advantage of reduced surgical duration and complete bearing of the decimates. In our experience, the two major problems with big bubble, deep anterior lamellar keratoplasty have been the identification of formation and the recognition of an adequate big bubble. Teichmann and Anwar have described signs that help the surgeon ascertain the presence of a big bubble. Firstly, blanching of the corneal stroma spreads in a wave-like circular fashion with the injection of a big bubble. Secondly, a completed bubble frequently exhibits a feathery white band at its circular periphery. Thirdly, the anterior surface of the cornea bulges after the bubble takes up space in the central cornea. In order to make this technique more successful and reproducible, corneal surgeons have proposed some modifications to the standard surgical technique. We describe a new technique of big bubble deep anterior lamellar keratoplasty that allows the surgeon to definitely and immediately identify the formation of an adequate big bubble. A Hesburgh Baron suction trephine was used to perform partial thickness trephination of the host cornea to an approximate depth of 60 to 70 percent of the corneal thickness. A self-sealing paracentesis wound was created with a 15 degree surgical blade just posterior to the limbus at 11 o'clock and some aqueous humor was expressed. Subsequently, a small amount of air of 3 to 4 millimeter in diameter and 0.08 to 0.1 cc in volume was injected into the anterior chamber. Following this, a 27 gauge needle was advanced horizontally in the corneal stroma and then air was injected gradually into the stroma to form the big bubble. Air was injected until peripheral movement of the bubble of air injected earlier in the anterior chamber was noted. This dynamic sign allowed us to immediately seize the injection of air into the cornea as it was indicative of complete formation of the big bubble. Debulking of the anterior two-thirds of the corneal stroma was then done leaving a thin layer of posterior corneal stroma underneath. A 15 degree blade stained with gentian violet was used to create a shelved opening into the potential space between the decimates membrane and the posterior stroma. Entry into this space was easily identified by the dynamic movement of the small bubble from the periphery of the anterior chamber back to the center of the AC. At this point, the incision was immediately discontinued and 2% hydroxypropyl methyl cellulose was injected through the opening into the potential space to clearly delineate it. A pair of blunt-tipped curved vanus scissors was used to divide the thin layer of the posterior corneal stroma tissue into four quadrants and each quadrant was subsequently excised bearing the decimates membrane completely. A 0.25 mm oversized donor lenticule was punched from the endothelial side and its decimates membrane was removed after staining with 0.06% tripan blue dye. The donor lenticule was then secured with 16 10 0 monofilament nylon sutures. This technique was attempted in three eyes with keratoconus and one eye with macular dystrophy. In all these eyes, the big bubble was successfully formed. The dynamic shift of the small bubbles helped us to recognize the adequate formation of the big bubble in all the cases. No intraoperative complications were encountered 
during any of the steps of the surgery. A best corrected visual acuity of greater than 20 by 30 was achieved in all the cases. The advantages of our technique include the following. 1. A real-time evaluation of the recognition of the big bubble. That is, as soon as a big bubble is formed, there is a sudden peripheral movement of the air from the center of the AC due to the inward bulging of the decimates membrane. Being a dynamic sign, this sudden movement of the small bubble is easily appreciated by the surgeon. If the small bubbles do not move towards the periphery of the AC after the injection of air into the cornea, this indicates that the decimates membrane is not bulging into the AC and that the big bubble has not formed. In such situations, a re-injection of air may be performed from a clear part of the cornea with or without first debulking the anterior corneal stroma. Moreover, the immediate recognition of the formation of the big bubble is advantageous as it prevents injection of too much air into the cornea which may cause perforation of the decimates membrane. 2. Another advantage of our technique is that decompression of the AC prior to the injection of the small bubbles allows space for the decimates membrane to bulge inward on injection of the big bubble. This reduces the resistance offered by the cornea of an intact eye, allowing the injection of the big bubble of air into the corneal stroma. We believe that our technique of double bubble deep anterior lamellar keratoplasty has the potential to increase the success of standard big bubble deep anterior lamellar keratoplasty in patients with anterior stromal corneal pathologies.